Hi everyone, I'm Charlotte. I'm a React Native Tech Lead at Theodore Apps. And today we're going to talk about one of our most beloved components out there, Suspense. You know why Suspense? You know why we love Suspense so much. But do you know how Suspense? How Suspense works? How does Suspense know a query is going to happen down there below? I should display a fallback instead. Today, we are going to focus on this suspense component. This won't be a talk about concurrency. We are going to solely focus on this component. And as we learn more about it, we are going to learn more about React as well. So before we talk about the how, let's recap the why. Why do we love suspense so much? Before suspense, our code used to look like this. We fetched some data, displayed a loader while it was loading, an error if we had to. And finally, we could reach the part that's the most interesting one about our component. With suspense, we don't have to worry about this error and loader edge cases anymore. They're handled above. Above our component, we define this suspense boundary with a loader and an error boundary with an error. And in any component located below, we don't have to worry about this anymore. This is why we love suspense so much. No more error, no more loader spread it throughout our apps. We can directly focus on the part where we bring the most value. So this is for the why. Now, for the how, we're going to dive deep into React. So before we do this, before we talk about how Suspense works, let me give you a quick reminder about how React works. React has a few fundamental rules, one of which is this one. React calls components and hooks, which means that you don't. When we instantiate components, we do this with this JSX syntax. But when we instantiate a component this way, we don't actually execute this function, at least not right away. This JSX syntax is actually just syntactic sugar and is equivalent to the call of this JSX function. And this JSX function, when it is called, actually adds a new node into the virtual tree of React components. Each one of this node is called a fiber. That's a term you may have heard before. Fibers store information about our components, their data, their props, and their states. This way, when a render happens, React knows which component may have changed and which ones should be rendered. So when we first build our app, React creates this fiber tree. Every time we instantiate a component with this JSX syntax, it adds a node into our tree. So if we build this app together, this looks like this. First, we instantiate app with this JSX syntax. So we add the app fiber, but we don't execute this component right away. React adds this work in progress pointer that's pointing towards the fiber that's currently being focused, that it's currently working on. React works kind of like a game loop. While work in progress, while the fiber we're currently focusing is not null, we are going to perform some work over this fiber. And when we're done, we move on to the next one. So we go through this tree this way, rendering our component, performing some work, until we reach the end of the tree or until another render happens. So let's do this together. Here, work in progress is pointing towards the first fiber in our tree app. We are going to perform some work over app. We are going to render this component. This means executing its function component. So we execute this function. Here, we instantiate these two components, A and B, with this JSX syntax. So we add the A and B fibers. And we're done rendering up. So we can move on to the next fiber, which is A. React goes through this tree from top to bottom. So we are going to render A. Here we instantiate the paragraph and the button, and so on and so forth. 
B instantiates this paragraph. And this is our tree. Now, what happens if we click this button right here? We trigger a state. We are going to render. So React is going to trigger a new render path. And this set state is going to add this render flag to the component that holds the state that was just changed. So the A fiber here gets this flag. And we are going to go through our tree again and re-render our components, but not all of them, only the ones that may have changed. A component is going to get rendered for either one of two reasons. Either if it holds a state that was just changed, just like A, when state state is called, it flags with this render flag, the component that holds the state that was just changed, and then it matches this criteria. Or if its parent got rendered. App here does not belong to any of these criteria, so it is not rendered, but A is because of this render flag. The paragraph and the button are rendered as well because their parent got rendered. But B and the paragraph, they're not rendered either. And that's it. That's pretty much all you need to know about React for what's coming next. I know that this may seem like quite a lot of information, but keep with me here. We're going to be just fine. So suspense. The job of suspense is to either display the children or a fallback, depending of, on whether a query is happening down there below. But knowing that React renders our components goes through this tree from top to bottom, by the time suspense has to make a decision about which one should I display, the children or the fallback, the children have not been rendered yet. So the query has not happened yet. So how does suspense know a query is going to happen in the children? I should display a fallback instead. How does suspense work? This is what we're going to try to answer today. Let's start with the first render. First, suspense is going to try to render the children. So we execute this function here. We've got this fetch data function that fetches data. So here we execute this promise. We've got a request here. So we'd like to let Suspense know, to let React know, we've got a query over here. Please display a loader. But how can we interact with Suspense? Remember this work loop. Our component here, our promise, is launched somewhere within this work function. While in this work loop, we're going through the tree. So we're somewhere, our code here is nested somewhere inside this work function, and we'd like to interact with suspense that's located way above our component in the scope that's totally different. From my code, I don't have access to React's code, nor do I want to. I don't want to bother with anything that belongs to details of implementation. So how can we do this? How can I communicate to React that a query is happening? Well, the trick that I found really interesting is this one. To use suspense, you don't simply launch a promise. You throw it. You throw this promise, and just like with any other regular error, it's going to bubble up. And our work function that is currently rendering our component this work function is actually nested within a try catch. So when we throw this promise, it bubbles up until it reaches this catch. And here, we're inside Rack's codes. So here, we're going to be able to handle the loader. Several things are going to happen within this catch. First, we are going to climb up the tree to find the closest suspense boundary and flag it as needing to render. Um, sorry, we are going to flag it with this did suspense flag. You have to understand that fibers are really just objects. 
So if you want, you can add any property to it. So you are going to add this did suspend flag to true to let suspense know that it's something got suspended and it has to handle this. Second, React is going to add a listener over the promise so that it knows when it's resolved. And finally, we are going to climb up the tree with this work in progress pointer up to the closest suspense boundary and start the, run the rendering process over from there. So we render suspense again with did suspense to true this time. So suspense knows something got suspended and it is going to display a fallback. And before we move on, suspense flips this flag did suspense back to false because it's already handled the suspension. And this is how we get to see a loader on the screen. But only half the work is done here because soon the query is going to resolve. When the query, the promise is done, React knows it because of the listener, so it can act on it. It is going to add a render flag to the suspense boundary and to trigger a new rendering loop. So here we go again. Should we render app? Well, it does not belong to either one of these criteria. Remember these criteria. So no, we don't. But suspense is rendered because of this render flag. It is rendered with did suspense to false. So it is going to try to render the children again. And this is how we can see our data on our screen. Now, if another query was to happen again, we wouldn't completely get rid of this children fiber once that it's been completely mounted. This children fiber is actually nested within this off-screen fiber that has this visible property. If it's true, you can see what's located below. If it's false, you don't. This is really important because if another query was to happen, this is what makes sure that we don't lose any data of the children. If another query was to happen, we would simply flip this visible property to false and add the fallback, but we don't get rid of these children. Because you see, if we add some data inside children, if we add this count state, for example, this use state is actually held in memory within the fiber tree. When we render a component, use state reads its value from the fiber. So if when another query happens, we completely got rid of this children fiber to display the fallback, we would lose our count. React is smart. It sometimes hides things in order for them to come back faster. This off-screen component is not a component that you'll ever use yourself. It's a hidden component that may be used in other, um, in other ways in other transitions, always in the same goal of bringing things faster to your screen. So this is how suspense works. In a nutshell, suspense first tries to render the children. Then maybe a request happens in the children. So suspense displays a fallback. And when the query is resolved, suspense tries to render the children again. Knowing this, there were a few things that I wanted to um, get away from this and to discuss today. First, this one is gonna be really quick. Let's say that a query is currently happening. So here the did suspense flag is falsy because suspense already handled the suspension. The visible property is false, so you can't see the children, but you've got the fallback. So a query is happening. What if another re-render was triggered above in our app that has nothing to do with the query being resolved? What would happen then? Well, let's try this out. Let's add a state to app. And let's click this set state button. React is going to add a render flag to app because it holds the state that was just changed and we are going to go through our tree again. 
This time, app is rendered because of this render flag, and so is suspense because its parent got rendered. So suspense is rendered with did suspense to false, which means it's going to try to render the children again. But the query has not resolved yet, so we are going to go back to suspense and to display a fallback again. I'm really not sure there's anything to learn from this, but I just find it fascinating to know that all of this is happening right under our noses and we have no clue because React is that fast. Now on to the second conclusion. If we have a component that has these two queries in a row, these two queries won't actually be launched together in parallel. We are going to first render the children, hit this query, stop the rendering process, hide everything behind a loader, and when we're done, try to render the children again. And only then do you reach this line. Only then do you launch this second request. So these two, two queries, even though they are so close, they are not launched together. But that's really bad for performance, isn't it? So what can we do about this? Well, there's something you can do. Instead of throwing multiple promises, you could throw, throw all of them all at once. This way, all of these promises are going to be launched together. This is what use suspense queries from React Query does, as opposed to use suspense query. React Query is really the only request state handler that I know of, so it's the only one that I'm going to talk about. But if you have queries nested into different components, these two requests won't be launched in parallel either, and this time your suspense queries can't really do anything for you. But I'm not sure that it's such a bad thing about suspense, because before suspense, this was already the case. You probably, in your first component, were hiding the rest of the tree behind this loader anyway. So we already had this problem, and if you want to get rid of this, you can prefetch your data earlier above in your app. There are some other optimizations made, though. Suspense will try to render the first, all of its direct children. Which means here, while profile has a query, the queries of help and newsletter of its siblings are going to get launched as well. Suspense pre-renders the siblings of its third child. But did you know that this behavior almost got changed in React 19? In React 19, the, the React core team thought it best to stop pre-rendering the children and instead show a loader as fast as possible to the user. So don't pre-render the children again. They said that the best would be a mix of these two behaviors. Don't pre-render the children so that you can show a loader as fast as possible, but schedule another render pass for the siblings so that um, you can uh, get their queries launched as well. But this would require some serious rework. So they said, they thought, in the first time, let's just stop pre-rendering the siblings. But the community showed how big of an impact this would have. Lots of apps used data as close to the place as they needed presenting on these waterfalls. So this change would seriously impact lots of apps without some serious rethinking of their fetching patterns. The React core team heard that and decided to roll back on this change. And if you're interested, you can follow up on this subject, on this issue. And this is all that I wanted to share with you today about suspense. I hope that you enjoyed digging through all of its darkest secrets.